Today, let's talk about four things that you may not know about the viewer on the Fusion page. The first thing that we're going to talk about is something in the top left-hand corner of the screen. If we click on this icon, we have this option called buffer. You have buffer A, buffer B, and then a buffer white. What this can do for us is allow us to compare two nodes side by side. The first selection is just going to be your buffer A. All we have to do is drag one of our nodes up into the viewer. And in this case, I had buffer B selected. So whichever node we dragged up is now buffer B and the original footage is going to be our buffer A, which in my case was the media out. And as I mentioned, if we come back to that icon, we have an option for a wipe. So now we can wipe between the two different nodes and you can modify the wipe pretty easily. All you have to do is bring that box up and down, maybe tilt it to the side a little bit. So it gives you that flexibility depending on which part of the scene that you need to compare. For the next tip, we're going to look at viewing our scene once we have everything set up. So here I have some 3D text, I have the camera, and I have a light. Now in this case, I have the light pointed towards the 3D text. So there should be some shadows, but I don't see any in this case. If we drag up the rendered node, we can see what the result of the light shining on the text actually should look like. If we drag our merge node back up into the viewer, right click on that viewer window, you have the option for lighting and shadows. What I suggest in this case is to click on shadows because in order to have shadows, you must choose lighting. Once you choose shadows, it automatically selects lighting for you. Now, if you right click, choose 3D options and deselect shadows, it will just get rid of the shadows, but you can use the same thought process in reverse to get rid of both. So in this case, you can't have the shadows without the light. So if you go to 3D options, deselect light, now you're left without both. Just to reiterate, what you have to do is right click, choose 3D options. First, you wanna choose shadows and that will bring in the light. And then the other way around, if in case you have to, you just remove lighting and that will get rid of lighting and shadows. You also don't necessarily have to right click and choose that. Across the top, there's an icon and you can add your lighting and shadows there. For this next tip, let's talk about advancing frame by frame in our viewer. You may notice in the bottom right hand corner, we have 200 frames. And if I choose the right arrow, we're just advancing one frame at a time. But if we right click on the play button, that triangle there, we have all these options about how many frames we can advance. So I can choose 10 and every right arrow that I press on my keyboard, it will advance 10 frames now. You may have noticed next to the frame count, there is a period and then there's a number following. And that's because we have the option to advance half a frame. There could be a multitude of reasons that you want to use this. One that I know of that makes a lot of sense is if you were doing some rotoscoping. Resolve is really good about interpolation between two screens, but to have that subframe option is a nice addition so this way we can manually make our own adjustments. The last thing that we're going to look at today is a technique that makes it easier to set up your 3D scene. Let's say in this case, we're pointing the light at our 3D text. If we wanted to move it off to the side, we'd have to adjust the transform options but of course the light is facing the same direction. So now we have to choose the rotate options so that it's pointing back to our text. Again, if we move it back in the other direction, same thing. Now we have to rotate it to point back at the 3D text. Now we have an option that allows us to set something as the target. And in our inspector, it's actually in a checkbox that's called use target. Once you click on that, it adds something to our 3D scene. And what we can do of course in this case is drag that over to our 3D text. And now if I were to move side to side, the light will continue to point directly at the text. Now, of course I just did that quickly, but we can change that perspective view to something from the left-hand side, maybe from above. And you don't necessarily just have to use this with lights. This is just a good way that you can point something at something without having to readjust it every time. Now, of course you could use this for animation if you wanted to maybe animate a camera facing towards your text in this case. But again, I think it's useful for setting up your 3D scene also. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in seeing more DaVinci Resolve tutorials, including ones that deal with 3D, check the playlist on your screen right now. If you have any questions or any specific requests, leave them in the comment section below. And your idea may become the next video, so I'll see you in that new video.